This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, Fred Stack up here. So the Samsung Galaxy A52 has been my daily driver ever since I got it. It's well over 4 months now and I have experienced a lot with it. So many good side and some minor drawbacks that I want to share with you guys in this video. I'm going to share my experience over the course of 4 months that I've been using it. So to let you guys know if it's still worth it. Considering the fact that we have other good alternatives available now. At least the competition is getting interesting, so how does the Samsung Galaxy A52 ranks in this regard? Should you still consider it? Let's find out. But first, let's start with the build quality. As I said initially, the A52 has been my current Dell driver. I have my two SIM card inside it. I've abused it, I've dropped it severely, submerged it inside water, and I wouldn't call myself a type of takes 100% care of his phones. Not like I don't take care of my phones, all I'm saying is that I am not perfect when it comes to that aspect. During my first month of use, I didn't use it with a case because I didn't like the included transparent silicon case that came with it. I was actually scared that I was going to break the screen or something like that, but that didn't happen. I later got a case and I became totally fine with dropping and throwing it around anyhow I see fit. There are a few scratches here and there on the rear, but that doesn't bother me at all because it is something that is to be expected with any plastic device. I'm not going to lie, the plastic on the A52 looks good in the eye when it is new but feels very cheap when it begins to wear. That being said, the Galaxy A52 is a very durable device and I couldn't recommend it any less because the build quality is very good. The Galaxy A52 has all the necessary ports and I.O. like the headphone jack, USB Type-C charging ports, dual speakers that sounds very very impressive, dual microphone for excellent call quality and a hybrid SIM card setup. I don't like the hybrid SIM card setup because I cannot use a memory card with my two SIM card inside the device. The 128GB of internal storage is filled up as you can see here. Speaking of call quality, initially it wasn't great. I used to experience a lot of calls break. In fact, poor call quality especially on WhatsApp voice calls. Fast forward to now, thanks to a consistent software update from Samsung, all of that has been fixed. Call quality is now great. Moving on to the display, the Samsung Galaxy A52 has a very good Super AMOLED display that is very bright with lots of contrast and vivid colors. It's a 6.5-inch 1080p display with a pixel density of 407. The brightness level is picked at 800 nits. The display is very impressive, I enjoy watching YouTube videos on it. Coupled with a very decent speaker, it just makes everything so appealing and enjoyable. It is not the brightest display I've seen, but it is very okay. Moving on to performance, I have to say that this is one of the best mid-range smartphones I have used. Forget benchmark scores or numbers, nothing beats an actual experience. On my day-to-day -day usage, I have never for once experienced any lack or sluggishness. Everything I throw at it just works. It is very impressive. The overall user experience is very snappy and responsive 90% of the time. Gaming is great, web browsing is amazing, multitasking is decent and app background management is decent too. There is nothing to really complain here when it comes to performance. This is a device that I've made several videos on, but if you want to know the specs, it comes with a Snapdragon 720G processor, 6 gigs of RAM, 128 GB of internal storage, 4500 mAh battery and One UI 3.1 on top of Android 11. Speaking of One UI, apart from stock Android or maybe Oxygen OS, I cannot think of any other Android skin that is much better than One UI. It is snappy, smooth, responsive, and little to no ads at all. The Bluetooth on here respect themselves a lot. They don't throw notification and ads to your face. The way some apps behaves on Chinese smartphones. And because of that, it doesn't consume battery a lot. Speaking of battery, the 4500 mAh battery on here can take a beating for a whole day before it dies off. I use my phone a lot. I use it for casual gaming emailing, scripting, social media activities, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos on it. Even with all of that, I still get up to 8 hours of screen on time with an intensive use, which I feel it is impressive. One of the downside about it is the 15 watt charger it comes with. It takes longer time to fill it up, about 2 hours plus to charge from 0 to 100%. Thankfully, the Samsung Galaxy A52 support up to 25 watt fast charging. I have a 33 watt fast charger around which helps in reducing the charging time significantly. It now took 1 hour 25 minutes to charge from 0 to 100% and that is what I've been using to charge it which is very impressive. But do you know what else is really impressive? Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators and aspiring people 
who want to explore new skills and take their creative journey to a new level. You can never miss out on anything because there are classes for web development, graphics design, photography, film and video production and there's something that will always suit your need. For instance, I've been so keen about improving my cinematography skills and classes by Joe Simon on using cinematography to convey emotions and connect more with your audience has been more than helpful. He talked about camera movement, lighting, framing and composition. How all of this can help you tell your story in a unique way. So if you're a creator or someone who is aspiring to become one, this is a great opportunity for you to click the link in the description and sign up immediately. One of the good things about Skillshare is that the videos don't show any ads because it is designed specifically for learning which will allow you to focus more on your creative journey. But you know what guys? You're so in luck because Skillshare is giving the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description a one month free trial of Skillshare membership with full access to all the curated classes. So make sure to check the link in the description and also check my pinned comments. Now let's continue with our video. The Samsung Galaxy A52 comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner that works 80 to 90% of the time. The reason I'm saying 80 to 90% is because during my early days when I got the device newly, the fingerprint scanner was a little slow, it wasn't that fast. Fast forward to now, thanks to several software updates and patches from Samsung, it now works efficiently. It is still not as fast as I might like it to be, but it is very okay. Moving on to the camera, the Samsung Galaxy A52 comes with a very decent camera that I'm so pleased with. It comes with a 64 megapixels main sensor, a 12 megapixels ultra wide angle camera, a 5 megapixels macro lens, and a 5 megapixels depth sensor. Then on the front side, it comes with a 32 megapixels selfie camera. Guys, to cut a long story short, if you want a decent mid range smartphone with the best overall picture quality with no huge compromise, the A52 is a device to get. The pictures on here is just good. Very good. Colors look nice, dynamic range is good and details are present in all its images. I've made a detailed camera comparison with the A52 and the Redmi Note 10 Pro which the A52 comes out on top. I will have links to that video in the description box below so go check it out and see it for yourself. The only area I might have little complaint when it comes to the camera has to be night mode. Night mode pictures comes out clear but the light flares is just all over the place which might not sit well with some people. I still wish Samsung can do something about it via a software update. Selfie on the other hand is also decent and everything just makes sense on here. Just go through the images and tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. Moving on to the video aspect, the Samsung Galaxy A52 can shoot in 4K 30 frames per second and the footage looks great. However, there's no video stabilization when shooting in 4K. You have to downscale to 1080p to get video stabilization. Speaking of 1080p footage, it looks great as well, though not as sharp as the 4K footage. Hey guys, first take up here. So this is the front facing camera of the Samsung Galaxy A52. I'm currently shooting in 4K 30 frames per second. And as I said initially, I've done several reviews on this device. I've done a comprising video with the Redmi Note 10 Pro. You might want to check out that video. I'll have links to it in the description box below. But what do you guys think about this video right here? What do you guys think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comment section below, all right? So, in conclusion, the Samsung Galaxy A52 cost about 147,000 Naira and at that price it might seem expensive initially but when you look at all the boxes that it takes right, it becomes a bargain. I can't think of any smartphone with a complete package like this at this price point. The closest should be the Redmi Note 10 Pro but it has a lot of compromise that makes me to always go back to the A52 especially on software. Remember, the question I asked from the beginning was how does it compare with what the competition has to offer? I'll say that, if you're looking for a decent smartphone to buy at this price point, the Samsung Galaxy A52 is my number one recommendation among others in its price range. It is fast, gaming is pretty good on it, the user experience is the best in its class, multitasking is great and above all you're going to get a promised 3 years of software updates from Samsung 
which means that a52 will get android 13 or whatever they end up calling it when it comes out so you see nothing can beat the a52 for now at least for now so that is it guys if you found this video useful please like and share to help youtube push this video to more people which will in return benefit the channel thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you in the very next one bye bye